um, as I try to enlighten guys after doing this for one, two, three, 30 years. Started back in 1979 doing this, uh, working at a wrestling school with my dad. Seen just about everything there is to see in the business, done about everything there is to be done in the business. So I try to take my knowledge and try to pass it on to everybody out there as much as I can. Now I'm just a very opinionated guy about the business and what I'm looking for as the individual. So some things you might not agree with, some things you might agree with. Again, that's the fun part of our business. Everybody's got their own opinion. Like, what if like, you just saw everyone run into this fight and like, very similar to you on a show? Like, very similar to how you wrestle, very similar to how you... You beat him up in the locker room, you take his shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> that happens a lot because the more I see wrestling now from the independents, everybody, everybody's doing the same thing. We had, I had a conversation with somebody the other day about this. There must be within a seven card match, at least 20 super kicks. Everybody's super kicks. Everything becomes like Baskin Robbins, the flavor of the month about doing stuff like that. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about? And I guarantee you, there's at least 10 people right away. I'm just gonna look at faces. As soon as I said, they go, shit, I, did he see me? <laughs> so I, I fucking hit my leg. But I see it every night. And sometimes guys and girls are so bad at it. That's the worst. Like when you kick somebody, it's the bad Japanese movie. And then the kick, or the kick, and then two seconds later, the slap. If you are gonna do it, at least do it well. At least do it so good that I can't see it which is find a character that's close to who you are, as close as possible. So when you do promos, when you do stuff, it feels more natural. Wrestling fans are different now than they were because they're a little bit smarter because there's social media out there. So they can read about every single thing you do. Because another thing we're gonna talk about is timing. Timing from an aspect, when you go to TVs, you got six minute matches, sometimes you got a three minute match. Oh shit, what do I do? You practice that in here, you get a guy with a stopwatch. Give them six minutes. About two minutes into it, say, listen, you gotta go home now. Work this stuff. It, work it here and experience it. Get it out of your system, perfect it. Here, that's why you have a school. Now we could do A. We could do the cookie cutter basic blueprint match, which is tie up, shine up your baby face. Let me, let me know who's the good guy. You sell it, maybe you powder out of the ring. Let me know you're a little bit of a chicken shit heel. Come back in, you get a heat spot or a cutoff spot. And we'll get in to that aspect of the business later. Have your match, get your heat, makes a comeback, one or two little dips. What do I mean by dips? One or two little false finishes, so it's not a straight through comeback and a win. And you go over, he catches one, leaves the ring, leaves you frustrated. No. So the story. They're telling you, don't listen to them. Come up, grab the hair, pull them back down. Play with them. You're, you're supposed to be a mastered puppeteer. You're gonna use them and you're gonna have them stand, cry, happy, sit, bored. You can control all that environment out there. All with this, just your hand, just your fingers, just your mind. There's a secret to that. I can't tell you it, I have to kill you, no. The secret is to not be selfish and worry about just getting yourself over. The business has never been about one person. It's about getting the match over. Me and you are in a locker room. The only thing we're gonna talk, if you're gonna have a conversation with me, we're only gonna talk about how do we work together to, for one night to get this match, and me and you walk out together and have this place fucking rocking. That's the only conversation I'm gonna have with you. Not, you know, you'll get guys that'll try to push, push the envelope with you. They'll go, whenever you hear the word but, that's usually not good. This is what I mean. You'll get with a guy that's a little bit of a prima donna, and you'll go, hey, listen, you ready tonight? Yeah, I'm ready tonight. What he's really saying is, yeah, I'm ready to look good, screw you. And you'll go. What makes a good heel is to know how to dictate a match, get the match over, work with the baby face, get the baby face over. Nine times out of 10, and the only time this is gonna change is if the heel has less experience than the baby face. Nine times out of 10, that's the word adapt. I have to adapt to everybody. I may have, in Japan, the great thing, I love the world working in Japan, every night you had a different opponent. So one night I'd be working Jushin Thunder Liger, the next night I'd be working Dr. Death Steve Williams. Are they anything alike? Hell no. <laughs> one could kill you, one could kiss you. You figure it out, okay? Do I have to adapt? You have to want to keep breathing by the end of the match, pretty much. <clears throat> First of all, you guys should be changing stuff. Even at a big man's level, work for WWE, guys work for 20 years, they all have the tennessee on a three three day live event or house show whatever you want to call them. 
non-televised, to do the same match every single night, per batum, from bell to bell. You don't grow as a performer when you do that. Guys ask me, well, how do I get better? You want to get better? You watch guys that are better than you. You work with guys better than you. You sit back, you, every, every night we always had a monitor, still do. You watch the monitor, out of respect, you, should, you don't leave the arena. After the first match, you don't pack your bags and leave. Big no-no. Because somebody sees you leave, that person can tell someone in the locker room before you know it, you're dead meat. You stay there, you sit in front, you're polite, you watch the matches, see how these guys got over. There's a reason why you run first and the guy you're watching in the camera is the last guy, main event. Because he earned his, he earned his stripes. I want to watch him and see what he does so I could be there. And when that guy comes to the curtain, I can tell you every night John Cena, when he came to the curtain, the first thing he did was go. He wanted to see who was sitting in front of the TV for, for a reason. And then if you weren't, the next day he may have a, he may have a conversation with you. Yeah. Selling, making a comeback. When to know make a comeback. No zero to hero, we've probably all heard that a thousand times in here. It still, ring, it still rings true. The audience cannot understand or digest or articulate why you just got your ass handed to you for five minutes and in two seconds flat, you got healed and you are fine. Cam. There's only a couple guys in the business that could do that. John Cena is one of them, only because it works for him. Is it right? It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. Argue with the guy that makes 10, 15 million dollars a year that what he's doing is wrong. Don't want to go there. Kind of stupid. I'm not going to win the argument. But if I'm in the corner and I'm kicking a guy 40 times, the only one he can sell is the first time. <laughs> because after that, he's not selling anything because it's 40 kicks. You punch the guy 10 times, he can only sell like the last one because it's, you can't sell the other ones because you, you're smothering them to death. So you, you got to think less is more. Shot. It's one of my little tidbits of helping you guys out, structuring a match and remembering a match and putting a match together. Putting a match together, you'll hear several times of, it's like making a movie, it's like reading a book or writing a book. That's the one I like the best because it has so many correlations with each other. If you're in a match and you're just doing spot after spot after spot after spot, and there's no commas or periods, it's one long giant paragraph that's two, three pages long, and when you're done and you're already winded and you go, and somebody says, what did you read? You go, I have not a clue. Why does that happen? Because it would be get the baby faces looking good, let them do tag team stuff. It's not two single matches in one match. Remember that. You're not doing two single matches in one match, you're doing a tag match. So, as a baby face, my, my partner gets hit, I feel his pain. I'm selling for him. I'm cheering for him. You just can't stand on the ring apron and not do anything. Um, and things are, the fun part of our business is the bloopers. Things are going to happen, and they're, no matter how long you've been in the business. I had a match with uh, Jusen Lager in front of 16,000 people for the junior title in New Japan. He got to the ring first. No, I got to the ring first, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to the ring first, wipe my feet off on the apron, go to step in, but when I stepped in, I put my other foot on the outside here, went to take one step, hooked my foot on the bottom rope, took a face bump. <laughs> got up, pretended like nobody was in the arena, dusted myself off, and I'm just kind of like laughing hysterically inside. Lager comes back out. He looks in with his mask and he comes in and gets to me like this, rest puts him back. He goes, tell this guy he can't get in the ring worth shit. <laughs> I go, I'm fucked. I got back to the locker room and uh, Rick Steiner started laughing. It was Rick and uh, Rick Steiner and Kensuke, no, not Norris, Kensuke against uh, Sting and somebody. And so when I was walking back, Rick goes, yeah, n nice fall. And I go, got to be careful, man. Karma's a bitch. So what happens to him, he goes on the top rope, two guys are coming up to feed for a double clothesline, he goes to step off. It's the old scene in Dumb and Dumber when they went down the uh, air airplane, when he got to the airplane, there's no airplane, and the guy fell. Same thing, he's on the top rope and fell like this. Both guys just looked at him and went like this and put the boots to him. I'm standing, waiting at the locker room going. And they walk right through the curtain and I go. <laughs> and he goes, I deserve it, I deserve it. I set myself up, I screwed myself. Pain comes along with the business. It's, it's what it is. It's from the immortal words of Dr. Death, Steve Williams. It's not ballet. You no, know, that's why I hate the F word. <laughs> yeah, get the F out. I hate the F word because it's not true. Because you do get hurt. I don't, I don't give a shit what anybody tells you when you're on the top rope and you fall in the middle of the ring. Is it cushy? Is it spring? Yeah, but it still hurts. But you don't think about it because your adrenaline's going during a match. But if you're cold and you just go in the ring and you take a bump, it hurts. 
when everybody here first started, I can, I can tell you, you can tell me in two seconds, the first day in, somebody has you doing 50 back drops, 50 tackles. Over here, there's a lot more games to be played. A lot of politics, a lot of cutthroats. Welcome to the world of wrestling. And it's the other, besides the in-ring stuff, and I've always said this, this is probably the easiest thing we do, the mechanics of putting a match together or doing a match or putting a spot together is easy. It's the stuff backstage, that part of the business, guys have a lot of trouble with. I was always okay doing that. I was always confident in myself. My comrades that were with me most of the time let me do all the whining and dining and the business part. That's the Jewish part of me. I always felt comfortable. I was okay because my dad taught me all they could say is no. You could ask for the world, all they could say is no. I want a million dollar raise, no, but at least I asked. If you don't ask, you never know. You know, and then somebody else asked before you, and damn it, I should have asked. He's got my spot. A lot of crap that, you know, everybody worries about themselves. That's okay, because sometimes you gotta be a little bit of a ass. You gotta be a little bit selfish, because at the end of the day, nobody's gonna pick up your tab at home and pay for your mortgage. No one's gonna pay for your car. No one's gonna pay for your kids to go to private school. Uh, do you believe in uh, soft handshake or hard handshake? <laughs> <laughs> so basically they're saying, would I prefer soft or hard? Another little tidbit. So you come up with a character. The character starts taking off a little by little and it starts to work. Eventually all good things must come to an end unless you're Steve Austin. The Steve Austin character, five years ago, 10 years ago, 10 years forward, 20 years forward, that character will always work. There'll always be somebody you like to drink beer with. There's always somebody you want to shoot a bird to. You would always love to tell your boss to go F off and you would always love to drop your boss into the ring. That character will never change, and nor should it. It'll, it'll be there to the test of time. Other characters that start going back the other direction, you gotta figure out, not only do you have to find a character, when you have, find the character, you gotta know your next thought of process is, how do I get longevity out of this? How do I get as much as I can out of this character? It's Boris Malenko, it was my dad's wrestling name. My dad says, I am not allowed in Houston, Texas anymore but I found a suitable replacement. Somebody that walks like me, talks like me, has the same mindset as me, and I'm gonna bring him out right now. My dad walks off a set, puts a mask on with the holes for the eyes this big, and the mouth this big, walks right back, sits down, looks in the camera, same sweater, nothing changed. You can see his whole entire face, just the material here and here, and says, my name is Mr. Houston, and I'm coming for you, Wahoo McDaniels. I can't tell you how many guys tie up and they tie up like two wimp. As soon as you're dead in the water, because you told me right away it's all bullshit. And that's the first impression. So you got to tie up like two pit bulls, two rams, two loving friends that haven't seen each other in years because they both went to the army and missed each other, but whatever. What do I look for? If guys can walk without tripping, no. <laughs> Just where they carry themselves, where they walk in the ring, Mannerisms. I can pretty much look at a guy in five minutes and tell you, not he's going to make it big, but he's got that aptitude. He's just got that thing about him that you just go, hmm. There's something about the way he moves. It sounds like a song. The upside yeah. down, you can only twist, turn, manipulate. You can only do so many things with the human body where it's like, okay, what's what move am I going to do? That's why I brought up Darby Allen because he he was doing he's doing shit that I've never seen before. The thing where Cody grabbed him and went to throw him through the ropes and went through the ropes and took a bump on the floor. I'm like, wow, grab my attention. Maybe not all times in a good way or a bad way, but he grabbed my attention. He made me look. And that's what I'm trying to get guys to come up with shit, do stuff as long as it makes sense to get yourself noticed. Characters, if you can take kind of what a guy does that you, maybe you liked or that you can emulate to a certain extent and make it more your own where it's like, you know, if you're doing the Randy Savage and you go on the top rope and you give me the hand signal and drop the, oh shit, uh, you know, you may dress nothing like him, you may have blonde hair with a feather in your ear, whatever, whatever the case may be, but just as soon as you do this and drop the album, I know exactly what you're trying to do. So you gotta, it's, it's difficult. It's the, the hardest part, or one of the hardest parts, is trying to come up with something that's different, unique, that you think or may think that people are gonna like. And again, a lot of it's just, Cut and paste, a lot of it's just, most of it's trial and error. Just keep trying stuff. This didn't work, 
Okay, now where do I go back to the drawing board? You know, too many guys times to tried one thing, didn't work, they give up. Well, shit. If everybody did that, no one, no one would go forward.